All right, what's up, everyone? Um, before we get started on this live, we're here live with me, Dom Master Mateo, Roland Wolf. I got, a, I got an echo on someone. That might be me. Um, you're live with me, Dom Master Mateo, Roland Wolf, TJ Berta, Bryce, Bryce Tui, and uh, Matt Monaco. Uh, all these guys have known for years, great traders. We all trade kind of differently, but we all grew from the same foundation. So um, we're excited to let you guys have a peek over our shoulder and show you guys just kind of how we talk, how we became friends, talk about the networking that's gone on in the past. We've all kind of learned from each other, grown from each other, and you know, grown in our own ways, but have still stayed really good friends. The power of networking and connections in this small niche is very important as you develop yourself. And so we just want to give you guys a look to see, you know, our true selves, whether we're, you know, the all-star trader you think we are or the degen th trader that you think we might be, you're going to see it here. Um, before we get really into the trading and everything, I do have some homework to get through. Um, we are not licensed professionals. Everything we do and say on this webinar is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Um, these are not recommendations to buy or sell stock. If Jack shorts a stock, I do not recommend following him. He takes very big losses from time to time. Um, and that can happen at any moment. Past performance is not indicative of future returns. Nothing is guaranteed. Please do your own research. There is huge risk to trading penny stocks. So just be aware of that as you're watching. Try not to be tempted to follow in on any trades if they are alerted. That is not what we're here to do today. We're not here to make anyone money. We're just here to give you a glance at how we trade, how we interact. Again, these guys are just my friends. Freaking love them to death. Love hanging out with them. We talk almost every day or weekly or monthly or whatever it is. We're always catching up. Um, I damn near lived with Roland for two years. I became part of his family. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I love these guys. I'm you know, really grateful for you all to be here. Um, if you guys want, one by one, you guys can talk about, you know, kind of your method of trading. If you're trading right now, if you're not, I know for me personally, like I'm really hands off right now. I really don't think this market condition, you know, sees a lot of follow through. So I'm just kind of sitting back, trying to enjoy my life, trying to, you know, build a business on the side and work out and just make sure that I'm happy and, and, and living my life while the market doesn't provide fruits of labor. Um, and that's just me, you know, if there's a really good setup that comes around, you know, big multi-day runner, big volume, liquidity, BBIG type idea. Yeah, I'll short a first red day if it's there. But, you know, I know it's not today. I know it's not tomorrow. I know that I probably don't have a trade today or tomorrow. That's just my style. That's how it works. Uh, and that's just me. So if anyone else wants to kind of take the conch shell, take the talking stick and, you know, talk about, you know, the way you trade. We got, we got 20 minutes to market open. I just think people should get to know who we are if they don't know who we are. Uh, Go ahead. Bird, I or not. What's up, guys? Uh, yes, my name's Tyler, TJ, uh, TJ the Trader on the, the Discords and the chat. Uh, but I've been trading since uh, 2016, I think, 2016, 2017. Started off from a psych student. Um, didn't know any of these guys at the moment. And uh, from there, just kind of continued to study, became profitable, I think, in 2019, end of 2019, beginning of 2020. Had a good year 2020, 2021, like everybody else. Um, but recently, just I've been uh, expanding my playbook a little bit, focused on higher price stocks. Um, just right now, I think that's where the, the volatility's at. I think that's where the money's at. You know, Ford, Snap, Tesla, Apple, all the bigger, you know, higher price stocks. Um, so that's where my focus has been lately. Uh, that's where it is today. Um, but other than that, yeah, just grateful to be here. TJ's a new friend we met in Vegas, but I know he's been in Roland chat for quite some time. We've seen him trade. He's made a good amount of money in the market so far. Um, the thing that I think TJ does really well is he's got that mental side to him. He's really, you know, he's been an athlete in the past. He's, um, you know, he just, he just knows the power of positivity, the power of positive thinking, um, which is an underrated asset within stock trading. You can get so negative on yourself. You can talk yourself down. You can get so unconfident. Um, DJ's none of those things. You know, he's been, he's found a way to manifest positivity, manifest, you know, his lane. He knows how to stay into it. And there's, you know, much respect to this trader. He has not made a million yet, but I know for damn sure he's on his way. Um, just in the way that he thinks it's, you know, the million, like to make it to a millionaire, it's, it's a mindset. It's really not like one pattern that really gets you there. It's really a mindset that helps you get there. And I, I think TJ's, you know, 
an incredible guy, an incredible trader, and, and really happy to have you on here, even though we just you know met you know, a couple of months ago. We've been talking for a while on Discords too, so. Bryce? Yeah, what's going on, guys? Uh, my name's Bryce Tui. I, man, I don't know. I'm probably the biggest <laughs> degenerate here. Um, well, maybe not, maybe not just mentally degenerate. Um, but no, I've been trading now since uh, end of 2017. Um, well, kind of learning how to trade and I got really fortunate enough to uh, meet Dom back probably in 2019 uh, or 2018 actually. Uh, Matt Monaco was supposed to be here right now. It's kind of slacking though. So I apologize for my boyfriend there. Um, but <laughs> Matt and I uh, were very fortunate to meet Dom and Dom has been like a huge kind of uh, mentor to uh, Matt and I both and has really helped us. You know, we, uh, that's how I met Huddy. Uh, and, you know, in terms of like my trading style, I definitely deviated from kind of, you know, Dom's, you know, when I was learning with Dom, but I, I primarily scalp small caps uh, on the long side and, you know, lately, the market just has been kind of every every gapper has been stuck in this range. I've been trying to expand a little bit, playing like small size with shorts um, and a little bit with large caps, but I really don't feel comfortable enough to use full size. So I've just been dabbling, trying to expand little bits at a time. But uh, kind of like Cuddy said, I'm in the I'm in the process of working on some other projects outside of the market. So that's where my focus has been lately. Um, and yeah, I don't know if I'm missing anything there, but I won't go too deep into it. I'll let, I'll let everyone else introduce themselves. But Huddy and Dom, thank you for having me on here. I'm excited to, I'm excited to trade you guys today. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I know a little bit about that other project. I can't wait to share it very publicly with everyone in this room. The dirty boy. <laughs> uh, Roland Wolf, Jack, whichever one, if you guys want to introduce yourself, talk about your trading style, um, go ahead. <clears throat> Jack. What's happening? Hey, Jack, I, I got to finish uh, watch <laughs> this thing real fast. Sounds good. Uh, I'm Jack. I'm pretty much just, I love the short stocks. Uh, you know, scratch a little bit like the research side because it's just funny to like see some of the moves in these companies like EWAC. They, they haven't even merged yet and they're trading at like 80 bucks a share. So, like right now, they're just like, <laughs> company. <laughs> it's just funny. Is that a glass of wine? No, I just got a detox smoothie. Okay. okay. I thought that was wine too. He's like, D Wack, they're not even murdered. Oh. <laughs> it was just perfectly done. Yeah, I, mean, I I don't really do anything but shorten and mess around like this, and that's how I like it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Pretty much all there is to me, though. I don't know if you're expecting like a big speech. <laughs> no, no, you actually, you actually over delivered for what I expected. <laughs> Jack, how's Colorado treating you? Dude, awesome. I'm eating so much food and it, I can't be happy with that. I'm so, I love that place, man. Yeah. I, mean, I got kicked out of the uh, W. <laughs> <laughs> I got snowed in. I'm like, Hey, can I extend my stay? And they're like, no, you gotta go like now. And I'm like, what? <laughs> they found out you shorted their DWOC stock. That's why. Yeah. Hated that. Yeah, what, what's working? All right. You guys? So, for those of you that don't know who Roland Wolf is, he's a, he's a brother, he's a father, he's a great man. I've known, I've had the pleasure of knowing him for years. He's a great golfer, too. Um, trading. He's a I'm kidding. Um, he likes to, you know, uh, his, 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 his strategy that he likes is the gap and crap reversal, you know, a stock that kind of gaps up in that buck area, starts trading massive volume, dips a little bit in the market open, holds some kind of base, and then becomes, you know, some kind of runner in the day. Um, he can talk about more of it when he, you know, is done making a watch list and sending it out to his people. Uh, but I just had the honor of, of, of trading behind him for two years. Um, really good intuitively at you know digesting news and knows which news articles he likes which prs he likes you know what what kind of volume what price range and the tax when it's there and i know for not right now it's kind of like a, a hands-off moment for him you know kind of waiting as a long bias trader kind of waiting for something to show us that small cap is back show us that small cap has momentum 
and then try to hit the next thing that is similar to what ran. Um, then generally letting momentum dictate, you know, aggression. So, you know, for a lot of, you know, long bias traders right now, especially the good ones, it's a big hands off moment, unless you're like kind of going to those mid cap, you know, bigger chip stocks. Um, I know it's not really what Roland does. It's not really what I do, but TJ, you know, he heard, you heard him do it. Definitely when there's momentum in big cap stocks, they can act similarly to small cap stocks. So I get the idea, you know, you have, you know, you have range. And that's what you don't have in small cap right now. So if you are a small cap trader like Roland, like myself, like the, like all of us here, um, again, we're just kind of waiting for some stock to ignite small cap. We don't know when it is. We don't know what it is. What we do know is it's not if it's when. You know, we've been in this before. This is very similar to what trading is normally like. 2018, 2019 reminds me of it like it was yesterday. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing. And then some hot sector, some, you know, gap and crap stock just catches a bunch of shorts off guard. And then everyone starts attacking the next one and so on and so forth. Um, so again, just, you know, kind of the whole thing is the system is like just waiting for the cycle to kind of complete and to allow us to get aggressive again. And until then it's survival mode. It's just, you know, it's not bleed your profits away. It's not like trade everything that looks good. Don't trade every single first green day because most things don't have follow through in small cap these days. And that's just the fact. And it's not new. It's not, you know, anything we haven't seen before. It's something that every trader needs to experience and adapt to. Sorry, Roland, I can see that you're maybe done now. So why don't you go ahead and uh, stop letting me speak for you? No, you're good, bro. And the truth is like everything you just said, I don't know, we, we've spent a lot of time together, uh, Huddy and I. So like, I literally, sometimes when I hear him speak, it sounds like I'm listening to myself speak. It's like the funniest thing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so I'm long biased, obviously, and I'm a small cap trader. And I think one of the issues, and I've been talking about it with my students a lot and just, you know, traders, um, was just like the crazy overextension in the NASDAQ index last year. Like the January, February effect, yeah, and OTCs, but the NASDAQs as well. The, like all the new traders that came in off the back of like the AMC GME move earlier in the year. And it kind of, I think it trickled into small cap. If you look at January and February, um, almost every single NASDAQ got extended. And that at one point last year, we were running out of small cap stocks is how it felt to me. Like we were running out of them. Um, and now what we've been seeing, for, I, I think for like months and months and months and months, and I've been kind of saying this too, uh, in terms of small cap trading, it got a lot more difficult. Um, we've had a lot less follow through, like Huddy said, first green days, like the gappers, they don't do anything um and it does suck and the but that cycle i think like i said is changing so at one point last year we had no penny stocks like no stocks trading under a dollar uh on the nasdaq index or like a couple maybe but i was scanning this last week and just after watching all these charts you know we watch charts every day and you and if you're going through daily charts like you start to notice the differences so like in march april may last year every daily chart we pulled up was super extended at least re in the recent past like went on some kind of run recently creating overhead resistance and all that good stuff um now we're seeing like the real an actual bleed out like everyone who thought you can just come in and buy the dip and hold which is like so many people last year <laughs> like so many people are now like still i'm sure a lot of them are still holding but they're getting a lot of them are being shaken out of these uh, lower price stocks and all the stocks really it's kind of crazy but the point i'm trying to get to is on my scan last week we had 200 nasdaqs under a dollar 200 of them from zero to we had 200 we had over 400 and something under uh two dollars so for me i'm like the happiest person right now i know it sucks right now but like i'm licking my lips because i got penny stocks again which is going to bring patterns into play that i haven't been able to use for years seriously um so so for me i just need i just need a spark like once i see a spark on some of these small cap and see some of the old patterns again uh dude we're gonna have reverse splits again all like all these lower price stocks have bigger floats they're gonna maintain compliance they're gonna be doing their reverse splits we had one yesterday or two yesterday so i'm stoked about it you know i think it has sucked for a long time for small cap and i totally get where berta and a lot of people like a lot of the successful traders that i know are, have been, you know, trading options, trading the market indices, uh, ETFs, 
you know, big cap stocks because that is where the better volatility has been. For me, it's just not it's just not so much for me. It's a never I'm I'm not, I'm not really a great big cap trader. I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's something I need I should have been working on and I see things people are doing, but I just kind of have always liked to stick to my lane, you know what I mean? That's been one of the keys to my success throughout this whole time was sticking to my lane. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to do still. I'm just trying to kind of wait it, wait it out, try to hit some singles and then go from there. Once things change, like I can't wait to get super aggressive. And my, my other favorite thing is like cheaper price stocks are just better for smaller accounts. So like for students who are trying to learn people who are just trying to learn now, um, first of all, they'll get a realistic, like if you're just learning now and you didn't trade last year, you'll get a realistic idea um, of what, how crappy trading can be. So, but that being said, yeah, all these cheaper price stocks, I think are going to provide a ton of opportunity for smaller accounts um, and just for small cap trading again. And I think it was a necessary reset because it's not like any of these companies got any better. You know what I mean? They didn't, they're all still complete pieces of crap, but we were seeing them trade like at market caps that they should not have ever been in and then hold like hold high prices for quite a long time. So Sorry, my spiel was a little long. No, but it was it was really good. I mean, it just brings me back to like, you know, middle of that, or towards the end of that pandemic, there was a day where there was like, what, four stocks under a buck? Yeah, something on NASDAQ like that. Or something. Dude, and now what you're saying me. is there's 200. That, that right? literally worried me because I was like, dude, what am I going to trade? <laughs> like if all, if all these small caps have now become mid caps and some even large, like large caps, um, what am I going to trade? <laughs> Hey, Ryan, what up, homie? You gotta get out of here. You gotta get out of here. Yeah. Hey, can I ex can I expand on that real quick? What Roland just said. Go ahead. Yeah. Take the con shell. Yeah. We'll so so uh, he's he's absolutely right. Um, you know, I think all of us kind of started um, with probably OTCs or, or small caps and stuff like that, and I think that's really the you don't really hear too many people succeeding right off the bat in this niche with like the higher price stocks, you know, the, the real companies, et cetera. So I think it's definitely important to, if you are new to stay in your lane, obviously try to learn, you know, OTCs, smaller caps, stuff like that, before you try to jump into, you know, overall market stocks and stuff like that. I mean, it's definitely, I think another level uh, to try to expand to, but obviously, you know, starting where we all started, um, it gives that nice foundational base kind of go off of so um definitely i wouldn't even you know a couple years ago i would never even be looking at these stocks so just to kind of put things in perspective and it really is a good time to learn again like if you learned in 2020 2021 like you learned that like penny stocks spiked really big then if you buy the dip they kind of like held their prices and went higher and like that is generally not how the dynamic works um so this is more of a realistic taste of like again the good and the bad of stock trading 2020 and 2021, they relate that market to some kind of bubble-esque market. They relate it to the dot-com boom with how things were spiking and holding. Um, I stopped short selling as a whole because every time I'd short sell, you know, some kind of first red day, it would just freaking hold up. And then it would go much higher. And it was like a, a great long, like every time it was red on the day. So I had to like really adapt during 2020 and 2021 and learn how to long stocks. And now it feels like it's right back to what I've always known, which is like for me personally, I like to short stocks. I like to short extended stocks. I like to sit on my hands, do nothing, wait for something to go objectively, very extended in multiple days. And then that first time it's coming down, I want to take advantage of the pullback. Um, super simple, you know, doesn't take me, you know, I don't have to watch every day. I can just run the scans at night. I can see if something's extended. Right now, there's nothing extended, right? I mean, the, the biggest spike we had yesterday was KAVL. And yeah, I was up a mere like, you know, what, 100% on the day? But like I'm used to things running for like three or four days, going from like two to like 20, and then like being interested in that kind of movement. So even though Kava was a big runner yesterday, like it's still not anything like to write home to mom about and say, hey, I have this great trade tomorrow. Um, it's not a multi-day runner. Generally, things don't have follow through, so it's not a surprise to me. It's gapping down 14% on the day. Um, it's definitely a singles market. You know, when you if you have an entry, if you have a pattern that you like, you know, rowing for the moon, going for a home run trade, especially on the long side of things is probably more detrimental. Like, again, you just don't see follow through right now. Not like in 2020 and 2021, where there was nothing but follow through, no, um, which is probably great for Jack. I've been telling my people like, it sucks, but it sucks for short sellers too. You know what I mean? If we're not getting extension 
in small cap. We're not going to have short sellers in small cap. I mean, we'll st they're still there. Shorts are everywhere still. But it's just not the same. We're not going to, you don't get the massive squeezes right now. And then everything becomes range bound pretty much anyways throughout the day. I mean, even so the downside is somewhat limited. The upside is limited. So yeah, for longs, if you're looking for any kind of big move ever right now, for the most part, you're just going to keep taking sm like hopefully small losses if you're managing risk. But I don't like doing that. I don't like just bleeding out small losses over and over and over again. That's no good. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm a proponent right now on long, like long wise. If you're long, you just got to take take the pop if you get a bounce. Like if you're playing lows, which you should be, and you get a little bounce, like just take it off because that's all that we get. You can't like fight the tide, you know? Swimming upstream is stupid. So for me, and then is the juice worth the squeeze? So for me right now, I'm just trying to wait for the best setups in this crappy market in terms of small cap. And then wait, I'm just waiting for stuff, something to change. You know, I'm waiting for like a 30 cent to like $2 ripper kind of thing. One of those squeezes that might get me a little bit off my uh, playing some of these cheaper stocks. We seen like Zella had a multi-day move that was okay, 30 to a buck almost. Um, Cavill yesterday was okay, kind of like midday, but it just bled out in the morning, then had like a midday kind of uh, reversal. So I'm still just kind of waiting for patterns to emerge. I don't just want to trade random price action in a garbage market right now in terms of small cap. My scan has like five tickers on it right now. <laughs> it's crazy. And it's that's crazy. not just small cap. That's going to 100 bucks for me on that scan, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. 5% threshold, my dollar volume minimum is like $250,000. So this is kind of like what we're dealing with right now. Yeah, we got one minute to the market open. So if you do make any trades, don't be afraid to talk about them. Um, I'm watching KSCP. I still think it can bounce. Uh, I don't think it's had a real first green day yet. And it's got lots of range. Besides that, I really don't have much I'm looking at. I move people on here. There. Yeah, I'm with Dom. The only thing I'm watching are KSCP and maybe RDBX for a first screen day. Well, bounce on RDBX, but KSCP chopped me yesterday. Yeah, but it still hasn't had that real first green day. If you look at like a five day chart, it's still like in trend to the downside. Yeah. Just holding that one short. <laughs> Have you guys taken a look at uh, KSCP's financials? I don't do that. Oh, dude, they're hilarious. <laughs> Like they have their revenue and then their cost of revenue is just more expensive than the revenue that they actually pull. <laughs> they have like a negative profit margin. <laughs> wow, E and F off a cliff. It's a nice little start. So, you know, generally when I when I hear, you know, someone like Jack, who's a very successful trader, like say something like that, I'll immediately go to bamsec.com, I'll open up the financials, and I want to see exactly what he's seen. I want to you know, get an idea of like, you know, what that means to him. So I just pulled up the financials, I saw exactly what Jack saw, it is, it is absolutely deplorable. Um, again, that doesn't really affect the way that Dom trades, but you know, as a short bias trader, it definitely affects the way that he trades and, and his perspective on like, I don't know, for me, you know, fundamentals when I'm short biased, like if I see something really dilutive, if I see something really crappy and it's extended, like I want to hold more patient. I don't know if you're the same way about that, but when something's just absolutely ridiculous, like kind of like Rivian, you know, when it went to 180, like when something's just blatantly stupid, like it just, it, it just makes the, the short thesis so much easier. Um, so, you know, part of the reason I think, you know, Jack's probably more fundamental based and I, I definitely do peek at the fundamentals. I look at the news, I, I'm curious. 
because I think when you're a short seller, you do want to understand the scenario going on. You want to understand what's causing the stock to move or what will cause the stock to drop. It is probably more important in that field than, you know, Dom who just tries to tag the momentum of the stock and, and likes to trade OTCs, which, which are all crappy companies, no matter what you look at. Yes, yeah, I think, of, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, speaking of OTCs, there actually is an OTC breakout right now, AIAD, that Tyler told me about yesterday. I didn't want to just buy out of the gate, but it's nice to see something that's not a sub penny breaking out. You can go roll. KABL held a buck decently. Um, going back to what Huddy was talking about, in terms of fundamentals, like I think it's I think it's more important, and I I look at them from a long perspective, but particularly when volume starts to dry up like this, I think it becomes more important in terms of what I'm picking for longs to make sure that they aren't like super dilutive um, at the prices that they're trading at because yeah. if, we don't, if we don't have vault, like last year, the year before, we saw a lot of companies pop on offerings, um, like drop, but then rip. Uh, we saw people buying the dips from offerings, like the offerings were being bought up by the public, like by retail and stuff, which was a big change from like 18, 19, where offerings were just the death sentence for penny stocks. So like last year, the year before in particular, I actually kind of eased off of the filings a bit in terms of it was like really, I was missing a lot of opportunities just by, just because I, was avoiding those so much and they ended up having like big backside runs and stuff like that. But as things have slowed down, like I've become more fundamental centric again recently. Um, just because I, I mean, it's simple, simple math, simple supply and demand oh. when we have lower volume like this, um, when some of these companies are diluting and dumbing shares, I think it just holds it down in a, in a stronger fashion, so. I think they're important, you know, for longs as well, not just for shorts. <clears throat> I took a trade. It was very, very quick, though. I don't know if it was not much for learning purposes, but I, I took snap. Yeah, that was More a pretty scalp, though. crazy earnings gap. Man. It was up like what? 40 yeah, it just sucks because right. I gotta cut this off. Right now, everything is almost everything is in tandem with the overall market. Yep. You know, so it's like if Spy pulls, pretty much everything else is pulling. Even even Snap. I mean, blowout earnings yesterday, total surprise, great numbers. Neglect. I mean, it was in a downtrend before they released, and then obviously Spy gaps down today, so Snap gap down. I mean, what can you do? You got to try to time it, but. I took a little scalp there for 2,800. Nothing big. It's funny you say nothing big, but you know, I'm sure the people watching this, you know, 2,800 in five minutes is pretty, is pretty awesome. <laughs> when you have in perspective. Yeah. Unless, Why? Well, I, yeah. I got out of pocket a little bit. I was, I was my heart, I was starting to, heart ball came out of my chest there because I was trying to, get out at the top but i don't know how to get around having stop orders set and then still being able to sell so i got to cancel the stop order so i protect myself and then put in the sell by the time you do it you know it goes from five grand profit to 2.8 but you know you take it is d -whack on any of your guys's radar yep i've been watching it yeah i think that could be pretty interesting next coming weeks yeah, it'll be a good short after it goes to a thousand. <laughs> One more morning parabolic with circuits that last for 30 minutes. It's it's definitely impressive the way that it's holding. You know, it has a stock that, you know, came from 10, spiked to 50. And like, you can see like from that first green day candle, it never even like got below 50. I can almost imagine there's still some shorts in this from that first green day that have just been waiting for it to come back down. And it's not, you know, it's actually holding up relatively really well, especially to like the overall market, like Tyler was just saying, you know, generally you see stocks fall the over market, overall market, but this thing is, you know, not at its highs, but it's at its highs, you know, it's still at a hundred bucks a share, you know, the market, you know, all this weakness we've seen, and it's still 
you know, given the past month and a half of trading or whatever it is, it's still there. Like, who knows who's short? Who knows who shorted the first green day? But eventually, like, yeah, there can definitely be squeeze here. It can definitely get, you know, this has the ability to run. It's going to be a trader favorite. There's going to be eyes on it. People will chase this if they see it spiking. That's just how psychology works. So, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely have an eye on it. It's always just kind of chilling on my watch list because, you know, you see things come out of this multi-month base and act as if it's a breakout. Um, I haven't really traded it since that, you know, first three-day run, but it, yeah, it is interesting to me. I do understand what's going on there. Dude, DWAC, DWAC is the max FOMO I've ever had in my career as a long, from a long perspective on day one, max FOMO. Like literally, like, I don't know. It was so much FOMO, I should have just bought, listened to it. You know what I mean? Like I- You love rarely, to buy Trump pumps. Like, that rarely <laughs> happens to me, but but that one just want you know i wanted it at 20 and 30 and then i went to work out with tui and monaco they, they they saw me they had they were going through kind of the same thing we we're all like we should just buy it we should all just buy it like we should buy it and and then that night and then it started gapping up after hours i'm like oh my god and i was just kind of butthurt because yeah i was butthurt about that one so i went to go have a drink with um with uh maya do you guys know maya at all Maya, good kid uh oh, yeah and the short bear uh freaking uh yeah anyways and i hit a deer i hit a deer that night on my way to go get a drink about dwax so it's this one's like seared into my memory it's like just a big mess but i hit a deer, hit a deer? yeah my car's in the shop right now finally how's the deer Dude, it was a buck. It was big. It got up and ran away. I think it no got to work because I, I hit it hard, but Yeah, I think I think D Wack was a sign. The D is for deer, deer whack. Yeah, know? deer whack, bro. It was the deer whack night. But yeah. I had a deer once, it took off my front bumper. Or down Not cool. I love it. Um, so yeah, you know, generally market open with, with this kind of market that we're in, like, again, for me, it's just kind of hands off and until something really, again, shows me that hands should be on and monitoring situations, you know, just like, just like Jack said, like he's, you know, eyeballing DWAC, like whatever, whatever he's going for, I don't know, but he recognizes that, that, you know, has volume, it's still in play, but it's not really there yet, you know, right this second, but this is what we always talk about having that pulse on the market, knowing what's running, knowing, knowing what's ran in the past, like, Definitely being here in October and November to know that DWAC once ran with exceptional strength and then knowing that it has some relative strength to the overall market, all that good stuff. It's just keeping a pulse on the market. It doesn't mean you have to be you know, necessarily trading every day, but just showing up and like, you know, running the scans and just seeing what's moving is going to pay dividends, you know, maybe not that day, but years later, months later, whatever it is, um, you collect data, you collect information this time and just do your best to survive and hands off until you something really resembles something that's familiar for yourself. Okay, AVL had a decent one hold. It just pushed highs again, 114. But that's what, but like, those are the small opportunities right now where, you know, 10 cents on a dollar stock to a 10% push, you know what I mean? And that's all I've been kind of looking for lately. And I've been trying to get myself to pull the trigger a little bit more and get back into kind of scalpy mode, which I, I'm more of like, I've been a positional trader you know, over time and looking for kind of bigger picture moves and sizing out into strength and stuff like that. It's not that kind of thing right now. It's like just for for my longs and everything I see, it's like just get right out and get your pop if you know what, you know, kind of predictable areas. But and even hold, if it is just like, decent, whatever, dude, like a... when's the last time we were trading one holds? <laughs> I'm sorry. When's the last time we saw a dollar stock? That's what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, look at who is in the room. There he is. Look at these studs. On, guys. Oh, sh there's. So we got we got the rest of the team here. I think that's Jack Kellogg in the bottom right and Matt Monaco in the bottom left. Uh, if you guys don't know who they are, I don't. They don't even need an introduction. Jack Kellogg, one of the more competitive guys I've ever met in my life, came in with one objective. He wanted to slay the freaking game and show everyone he ain't no valet driver. He is a fully fledged <laughs> trader. 
guy came in and absolutely, you know, recognized the opportunity in 2020, 21, and, you know, made minced meat out of everything. It was absolutely spectacular to watch him come in the chat and just throw up a number that he made that day. And just my eyes would just, my mouth would just drop to the floor. Like, again, bro, what? And then Matt Monaco comes out of nowhere and starts doing something very similar. Um, not to the same extent, but, you know, out of nowhere, just starts dropping these numbers daily. It's just like, I don't know what drugs they were taking. I'm sure someone was on Viagra, Blue Chew. I don't know, but it was a spectacular thing to watch. Uh, that's kind of my introduction for you guys. If you guys want to talk about, you know, what you trade, how you've been doing with this current market or whatever, whatever you guys want to talk about, whatever you guys want to share, that's up to you. I'll pass the stick. Rumor has it, Kellogg just copied all my trades over the last two years. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I remember that one time. Remember that CBTC trade, Matt? Uh, no, but do I want to remember it? Was it a good one? I think it was like when CBTC was at, I think it was the day before it broke out over a penny. That it was at like yeah. 0.008, like five or six or seven. And there was like 12, I think there was like 12 to 15 million shares or something. And me and Matt are just like, Yo, let's split this and let's let's see what happens. <laughs> we both bought it, and then from there, just like it started spike. It went up like a hundred percent within the next twenty four hours. I think I sold out at like maybe like eighty percent or something. But I remember that trade. That now that you speak upon it, yeah, those are the good days. That was awesome. Yeah, you yeah, guys now, broke. You guys broke the OTC market. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing going on anymore in OTC. So, yep, it's definitely been difficult lately. I'm trying to find like my, like my footing of, like where I can feel like I'm making the most progress. Because, like Huddy said, like I'm a very like competitive person, and like I'm trying to always look for the best way to efficiently use my time. So I've tried different strategies. Um, whether that being only showing up for what I think is an A plus opportunity, um, like BBIG. And I tuned in right when um, I woke up and I saw that Huddy was talking about how he shows up for BBIG and stuff like that. So I tried to do that, but unfortunately, I just completely whiffed the ball on that one. That's because it's kind of hard to just show up and not have any uh, experience. Like I think I had in trade uh, maybe for like eight to 10 days before BBIG. And I was very rusty and I blew that opportunity. And I've also blown other opportunities. Um, and then I'm trying to just uh, have really small gains now, like 300 bucks, 500 bucks, 1000 bucks. Talked about this a lot with uh, Jack too. But that also like, even though the, the money is so insignificant, like it will really stress me out. Like if a pitch, uh, position goes against me, whatever, one, two, three grand, because I've tried so hard to make three, $500, whatever it is. And then I can just wipe it right away within like, <laughs> like one, two minutes. So I don't like doing that. And another strategy I've tried to try learning about um, larger caps and bigger caps, but they're just, they're, they're super competitive and like super tough. And it's not really a niche that I feel like I fit in with. Like I've always been good at like the biggest dog shit stocks like OTCs, straight up uh, NASDAQ pump and dump stuff like that. And to trade something that is so real, like Facebook, Amazon, Tesla, SPY. Um, not saying that those aren't pump and dumps, but basically they just have so much liquidity, so much random movements that even when I try to understand them, I always find some kind of blocker where it's just like, why is it doing this? Why is it doing that? Like, this doesn't make sense. No matter how much research I do, that's why Sykes teaches penny stocks because those are the most predictable in my opinion and from my experience. And these larger cap stocks are way tougher. And also they're very dangerous because they're unlimited size in two seconds if you want to pull the trigger. And that's something... I've, that's something that I've also been working on is I said um, that I wanted to size down my accounts, but I've been doing a really good job at not oversizing on everything just because I recognize that I am unstable and I am uh, not profitable. 
So I don't want to take big positions because, you know, that's what I did really good last year at this time was just going all in, not all in, but like as much as I could take on all these OTCs and all these other stocks. And now if you were to do that, like you're just asking for huge losses. And to be fair, I've been stuck in some crappy stocks these last three months. CAR, which I should have avoided, but HUDI shorting that bounce. Um, that was very unfortunate. And that one OTC that I bought, TLOFF, had uh, actual news with Tesla. And it just straight up um, dumped with zero bounce the entire day. And I thought that it would um, kind of have a decent little breakout over a dollar or something because that news is very strong. And if that news hit last year, that stock would have probably went to five bucks within like a couple of days. That's enough rambling for me. Um, I'll pass it over to Monica now. Yeah, Kellogg, well said. Uh, I'm pretty much the same spot as you. Uh, I size down a lot. And the way I do that is I like physically actually like withdraw my money um, because I know if the money's in there, I will just be tempted to take much larger position sizes. And what I did during 2020, like when I like really got my feet under me before 2021, uh, is I just like always kept my account at like a really stable level. Um, at first it was like 50K. And then as I started trading better, I upped it to like 100K. So like literally every day, like when, if I'd make like 500 bucks, I'd just withdraw that $500 back to 100,000. Or if I lost a thousand at that point, it'd be like, well, I got to make it back before I can withdraw any money. So kind of like felt like a little more like a paycheck there, which I know is an area a lot of people struggle with is the consistent payment factor. Um, I didn't think about it like being green every day. It's just, I didn't want too much money in my account to like all of a sudden potentially take a bigger loss than I was ready for. Um, that was really the goal there. Uh, and then obviously 2021 happened and my account got huge and now I've withdrawn it back down. It's much, much smaller than it's been in a while. Um, and I'm comfortable with that because I'm just, the plays aren't there today. I'm looking to just, you know, make a good trade when there's a good trade and, really honestly embracing like a huddy and a rolling wolf style. Cause I remember watching them in like 2018, 2019 and they'd be like, no, we took two trades this week because there was only two setups or whatever. And that's pretty much exactly what I'm doing um, right now. Just waiting for the really solid setups when they're there two, three times a week, play them. And then the rest of the time, just kind of let the market do its thing. So nice, bro. Dude, I like what, I like what Jack was saying too, just to kind of touch on it. But like, it's something that I've struggled with too lately is like when the plays are there because I've been so inactive, it's almost like ring rust, dude. Like, like pulling the trigger and then kind of playing it how I should be playing it. It's just not quite so sharp. So my, what I've been trying to do lately is just be present a lot more um, and just, pull the trigger when I need to and just kind of test the waters for now. It's not like, and that is strictly, I'm just trying to kind of stay sharp because, you know, I don't know what this year is going to bring. Maybe it's just pockets of momentum once in a while. You know, that's how 18, 19 was. Uh, that's how they were. Like we'd have a runner and then maybe two or three runners, some sympathy plays or something like that. And then it was gone, you know, and that may be what we see for a while too. Just little pockets of like runners here and there. And I just kind of want to be ready for those because in a year like this, if it stays like this all year, which it could, you know, it's possible. Then it, the, those like little pockets of momentum for day traders become way more important. And for me, like D, like DWAC is a good example. It was really slow for months before DWAC. And I was so used to just sitting on my hands and not doing anything and all like, that sort of idea that I wasn't like, I couldn't get myself to pull the trigger. I don't know. It's a weird sort of psychological thing that I'm still kind of working on right now. Um, I can tell you like the last eight months have been psychologically probably some of the hardest I've dealt with as a trader um, in terms of the adjustments. And then kind of like Jack said, figuring out where to fit in um, as the small cap patterns got so crappy. Um, and for me, the answer has been just kind of sit on the sidelines a bit, keep watching and wait. You know, I'm just kind of waiting. I've been watching other stuff too, you know, out of necessity and kind of boredom. 
I've been watching Spy and like all the other stuff. But I'm just trying to stay sharp for my patterns when they come and be able to nail them when they're here. And, I, you know, and hopefully the year brings us some a lot better than what we've had lately. But I, like I said, I've just been kind of like getting into my old playbook, my penny stock playbook for NASDAQs, which I had, you know, that was what my whole playbook is based on. Like one to five dollar NASDAQ stocks. That's like my whole playbook. Um, so I'm getting back into that and I'm excited that we have one dollar stocks again, two dollar stocks, stocks under five. <laughs> It'll be good. I think I think there'll be some good times this year. I just want to be sharp for them. Yeah, all, all great things that were said. Um, Matt, I'm in the same boat as you. I definitely rebalanced my accounts back down to an amount that doesn't allow me to take some ridiculous size on some setup that doesn't deserve that size in a market that really doesn't deserve that size. Um, I had to protect myself. I, did, I definitely had to size down and, and make sure that my account was not too big where I was being aggressive for no freaking reason. That helped protect me. Jack, what you said about not going ham on the liquidity of big chip stocks. Also a great point. Like my biggest fear is like, you know, we've all been profitable, you know, not just 2020, 2021, but 2017, 2018. That's like, you know, we've, we've, we've stood the test of time, 2016 even. Um, my biggest fear is like, I hear stories like 15 years later, someone's been trading for 15 years and then they blow up. And it's like, I feel like the only route that allows that to really happen is when you go into big chips, when you go into options and you start trading things that, you know, maybe you have a couple of years of like, you know, exceptional results, but it just takes that one trade. It's always like, that's the thing with trading. There's always like the ability for that one trade to take you out of the freaking game. You're done game over, like done, you know? And I feel like it's that person that, you know, starts like scalping around on big chip stocks with huge size that one day finds himself in a peculiar situation where they're just like, fighting for some reason, swimming upstream. I don't know how it happens. I've never seen someone lose that kind of money before. I've never even heard of it. Um, but I, I, I have heard stories. Like, I don't know the people directly, but I've heard stories of just, you know, people blowing up 15 years into the game. Like that is, you know, I'm always trying to avoid disaster situations. That's kind of what I take from that, right? So that's why I rebalance the account. That's why I stay in my lane. And just like, again, I'm like in the Jack Kellogg boat where it's like, if I can make two to 5K on any given trade. And then, you know, if there is an A plus setup, obviously I'll, I'll, take the opportunity for what it is when it's there. Um, but just staying small and just like, you know, risking very small in my account and just surviving. Cause you know, I, we all know what we're looking for. We all know what we need to see in order to maximize profit potential. And we all know that it's not there right now. So whatever protective measures we can take so that, you know, we can break the habits that we built in 20 and 20 and 2021, right? It takes like three weeks to form a habit. We all formed interesting habits during that crazy market. We were buying things that, you know, in this market would never work in a million years. So we had to retrain pretty much our, our muscle memory to not go after that kind of stuff. Because again, there's just no follow through. And we had to train ourselves to not go after it with the kind of size we were using um, when everything was just working exceptionally well. So, you know, great things that you guys talked on. And uh, I just wanted to share that with you guys. I'll go back to mute. Dude, trading got wild the last couple of years. Like, and, and that's the thing, the habits that were formed that we're paying really well in those markets are the same habits that right now will just drain an account really quick. So I've gone to the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Like I've gone from like YOLO central, you know, diamond hands. It took me a while to like, it was like halfway through that diamond hands movement where I'm like, I should be doing this too, I guess. Like, because that, go, that went against like everything I was, that I had like, had stood for for years pretty much up till that point like the the whole the hodl and the and all of a sudden people are calling me a bitch for like selling i'm like well, what is going on here you know what i mean um so but i adapted to that point at that point and started holding things longer and being a little bit more uh <laughs> crazy with this stuff but like yeah now i'm on the other end of the spectrum i'm just haven't been doing anything lately hardly anything <clears throat> yeah i feel like it's all just about like adapting and whatever whatever is working in the market is always um it's always different and it's kind of hard to find right away like what it is but it is very obvious if you can really look very outward 
like what is really going on, but it, it takes the human um, usually more time to fully adapt, I feel like. And it's just all in that, that little niche of time that you make sure you don't do anything super stupid um, because that is the most detrimental time. You know who we haven't heard from? Randy. And by Randy, I mean Dominic. <laughs> Hi. What do you want to hey. know? Oh, you know, how your day was, how, how your morning work was, you know, talk about your wife, whatever. I want to know, I want to know why we're not privileged enough to see that face of yours. Yeah, exactly. Show it. Beautiful face, man. Come on. Well, it's on the, yeah, I'm running the OBS, so it's on that stream. It can't be on both. Dom, I actually have a question uh, okay. for you. Go ahead. I, I know you're a great trader, but word on the street has it you're not the best Gilman. Can you uh, can you elaborate a little bit on that, on your on your fishing abilities? I heard you're not the greatest there. Well, fishing and Gilman are two different things. Being a Gilman, I think, is something you're born with to some degree. But, you know, fishing is a skill. I think Gilman, you just have that recognition of where the bluegills are. And someone in the room with me actually is a professional Gilman. Um, I had to look up what Gilman meant, by the way. Uh, I'm on the same boat here. Yeah, I, Jack I, I was Kellogg, just, was, Jack I, Kellogg I heard is from your other guy in the room, Bethany. Right? No I heard from your other guy in the room that you're you're just not quite as good of a Gilman as he, but that was that was my biggest question. And I'm mad enough to admit it too. <laughs> Would you call yourself a better fisher, though? Oh, 100%. Okay. Does fishing uh, actually take skill? I feel like you just drop the, the line in the water, and whether a fish bites or not feels kind of lucky. I Dude, agree with fishing. Ta fishing takes so much skill, bro. I've, I've been, I got oh, into I bass fishing fun. since I moved to Texas. Only catches a fish every day. No, I got into uh, bass fishing when I moved to Texas, and it's like it's kind of like trading, man. It takes patience, discipline. There's so much to learn. Like You got to learn all about the fish, where they go what to throw at them but i'm but dead can, serious dude i love it i think it's a, i think it's an amazing activity for a trader it's like meditative you're just in the quiet usually somewhere pretty it's i don't know i, I'm, I think I'm not, a, i think it's I'm definitely not, a, a tough skill i'm not doubting you but can't you just use like technology that like shows you where the fish are like to me yeah. it just seems like it's but cheap. even then dude yeah, it's called even, sonar. Then, even with the sonar. technology like i i can't uh, actually that's a line never mind I was going to try to compare that to trading, but I, my analogy would have been so wrong. So I'm going to <laughs> pretend like I didn't see it. Okay, nice, nice try, Bryce. We appreciate yeah, the you. effort. That's, I wish my teachers in school gave me those kinds of grades back in the day. A for effort. I would have done really well. No, but that's why I low-key kind of hate this whole journey of trading because it's kind of taught me how hard it is to succeed at anything. And now when I go into ventures like trying to be a good fisherman or a hunter, and I don't get lucky, like I still haven't killed a buck in a couple years, and it's like, I know I'm gonna have to put in hours and hours of actual like research and experience to actually be good at it, and so it's actually kind of depressing because I know if I don't put in all that work, I'm probably not gonna catch any deers. Bass fishing is easier. It's easier than trading too. <laughs> Maybe about 100 hours of YouTube watching and you can kind of figure it out this one you know what i'd say is harder than trading though is golf golf as well golf's like way harder than trading yeah golf is difficult <laughs> this one time i went fishing with dom and Bosky, and they made uh and they wanted to fish from 6 a.m to like 8 p.m at night and i was pretty over it at like lunchtime like one two yeah <laughs> and then uh, we had to get home and i was i was hangry and we had to cook all the fish we were eating at like 10 o'clock at night <laughs> dude jack they did they did the same thing to me when i when i visited him he, he took me hunting 
So we got in this little stupid bunker. It was beautiful, actually. The view was beautiful. Stupid we get in this bunker. <laughs> I sit there. They, do, they start making weird noises with these with these horns and, and, and blowing noises out of a horn. And I go, okay, what now what? They and they're like, what were they doing? He's like, they started. <laughs> they like yeah. they had these horns and they would like rub them together like bucks were fighting. They were like imitating the noise and then and then they were doing the mating call and like they were done with their little routine. And I was like, all right, guys, now what? And they're like, shut up. And I'm like, what? And they're like, don't talk. And I'm like, what? Like for how long? They're like three hours. I'm like, no. I'm like that's not that's not what, not what I do. And then for three hours, not a single deer walked by. Yeah, you called me from that. From you called me. He's like he's <laughs> sitting in this little tent. He goes, it's freezing. I'm not allowed to talk. <laughs> we we brought like eight white claws for myself, so I couldn't keep quiet. And maybe that's why no deers came up. To tell you the truth, too, like I've been a lot, um, I've been a lot more happy without so much, without so much trading in my life, which I feel like the stress levels have gone down so much. Like I was looking at like a few um, pictures I had of myself of, around this time last year, and I just I look so bad and like so out of it all the time. And I remember just being super stressed out and. Uh, so it's, it's really nice to have so much more energy nowadays. And like, I remember I had, uh, I had a lot of trouble falling asleep when I had like 70, 80, 70 to 80 positions, maybe 90 overnight. And it was just, it was just nuts. Like it was way too much stress to put on yourself. And it took me a long time to actually recover from that too. But, um, it was worth it though. Yeah, it was yeah, definitely was it? worth it. And I kept just reminding myself, like, <laughs> this is the time to like, this is the time to do it. You have your entire life yeah, to, to do whatever you want to do after this. And uh, yeah, so. Yeah, that's, it's easy to say after you make $8 million. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> it was all worth it. No, but I get you, bro. I, dude, I totally get you. And I was so stoked for you. Like couldn't have no better person. And I think the way, like, honestly, the way you stepped away from what happened was the smartest possible thing you could have done. Like, I think just just based on the OTC markets, like, dude, they shriveled away and died quickly. And like, you didn't have to worry about it because you weren't taking so much part, you know, it was cool. It was awesome to see. Mm -hmm. And and so, yeah, man, health is important. I don't know. I think you stepped away at a perfect time in terms of like frequency and everything. I thought, dude, yeah. everything about that run was like so phenomenal. I can't even. It took me a while to comprehend what you were doing, bro. I'm like, this is fantastic. You know, it was so good. Yeah. I I remember the day on the golf course that Roland figured it out. <laughs> dude, like, dude, it's yeah. genius. <laughs> I don't forget which one, like seventh or eighth, hundred k, you know, trade. I don't know what it was, and I was like, oh my. It was God. TSMP. It was TSMP. It yeah, was totally. and I was like, you know what? I need to like step my game up right now. Obviously, I'm like not doing something right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just, I mean, the bull run in OTC was like a solid three months, and like everything was just holding and going higher, yeah. holding and going higher, holding and going higher, and you could just pretty much buy them every single day and like the dip would hold it would go up the dip would hold again and go up higher it's set higher and then we had that all out you know last supernova wave yeah it was actually wow uh tsnp topped out um one year ago tomorrow on 2-5 so right around this time is when everything was kind of ending but there's still so much opportunities on the back side until eventually everything i was like a mega bowl like full-blown like diamond hands the, the whole shebang <laughs> and that was kind of hard to um because like all these would have been amazing like short opportunities if you if you could have turned your brain to like super bearish on all these but it was it was too hard to make the uh, the shift too quickly and Frankly, like going long is like so much easier. You don't have to deal with overnight fees and shorting and max share position sizes. You can just get in, get out with as much size as you want. And uh, 
holding the shorts overnight would have been difficult. But of course, uh, HMBL faded from eight bucks now down to 20 cents and pretty much all the other stocks as well. You know, there were so many OTCs that have just faded to, to zero. And they all would have made great, you know, one, two month swing shorts. You, every, you would have made like 80%. I remember, I remember like it was yesterday when, when TSMP was at a buck 80 and I think I was in like Roland's chat or something and I was like, you know, are we going to look back and say, holy crap, like how did TSMP get to four cents to a buck 80 and why are we not just swing shorting it? Like, but obviously in the moment, it's like a really tough thing to like, you know, while everything's going crazy, like it's a tough thing to switch that bias, but you know, just staring at those charts, I was like, this is as supernova as it gets, you know, this has been a three month long run from four cents to a buck 80. Obviously, they did a reverse split and, you know, the prices are different, but that's, you know, ENZC, all of them came from literally pennies and they were at, you know, the dollar range. And I was just like, this is, this is like insane, you know? And again, you, you make a great point with short selling and there's fees and like holding for a year, like who knows if that's even profitable or not at the end of the day. Uh, but, you know, these are the most supernova charts that we've ever seen in our lives. And that's why Roland kind of started this whole webinar with like, we needed this global reset, like things needed to come back down and cool off from what just happened you know it's just it's just everything was so exuberant for a sec for for three four months yeah didn't at one point like didn't tsmp have like a multi-billion dollar market cap or like a one billion dollar market cap or something like that yeah i think it was something like that yeah which was nuts yeah that's like unfathomable do you think we're ever going to see that again to that magnitude? I don't think so. Only I, mean, I don't think it's anytime soon. I, I, I think, you know, if it happens once, it can happen again. You know, like that's just, you know, human psychology. If it's, if it's capable of happening, it can happen again. But it takes a number of unique circumstances that were bred in the pandemic, especially just all the money inflow, you know, all the new money inflow, huh? which isn't really there anymore, right? Like everyone was work from home. Everyone had stimulus checks. Everyone, you know, you couldn't even gamble on sports. So everyone just came to the market and just started gambling. And it created like just liquidity everywhere. And like, like can that circumstance happen again? Sure, but like, is it gonna happen tomorrow or this year? Definitely not, you know? I think it's a once a decade thing, maybe once every two decade things. The cool thing is about trading is like, once you know how to trade it, if you can recognize that it's there, you can step away and come back when it is there, you know, brush off the dust and get right back to business as ordinary. You know, it's not like these patterns really change. Um, you know, Tim Sykes started learning this stuff in the beginning of the 2000s, maybe even before 2000. So, you know, the patterns are for the most part the same, you know, it's the same framework. Um, just magnitude was was what was on crack and like that probably doesn't happen again until circumstances align. Yeah. I'm looking at CYDY right now, you know, just like, <laughs> Crazy, down to 62 cents. I think that was the best one. I wish I had a, I wish I had the capital I had now at the end? that one. <laughs> I think my, I think my cover account was only like 200 grand at that point. <laughs> but, that was sick, uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. Oh, we were on man, the phone, I yeah. think. I was just nuts. That was like the start of it too. Like the, the nuttiness. Mm -hmm. yeah, that one was great. And that that was the one that shifted my super bearish mentality to super bullish because I was so bullish on CYDY. Um, even when it was at like a buck 50, I was, because Adam Furstein and all them, they were always bashing it. And, you know, it was just consolidating. And I remember multiple times trying to, um, swing short it. In fact, like you can draw the, the trend line on it when it's kind of broke that trend line. Let me get the date like six dash five dash 20. It kind of broke that trend line under it stayed underneath three bucks and it kind of started fading. And I remember like the day when it had that, that dip down to 260, and there was just like 400 K bids there. Um, and then like it started to curl up and that would have been an amazing long. You could have, you could have basically loaded, you know, I was trading a couple million shares a day. You could have loaded like a hundred, hundred K shares and added to a winner on that one. 
um, and risk like three, two fifty, something like that, and just sell, you know, the best you can and its strength, knowing that there's so many people short bias, and you know when these things are holding up for months at a time, creating those super bullish um, daily patterns. When those go, when they actually go, you can kind of see the chart really start developing by like day two, day three. Once it's clearly closing over the highs and uh, staying green, like th those are the ones that blow off and do the uh, the nutty moves. But that, that was such a great supernova. I think it's my su favorite supernova of all time. And then tops out perfectly at 10 bucks and then panics perfectly to five bucks and then bounces perfectly and fails. It's just the ultimate supernova pattern that played out to a T. Yeah, good times. <laughs> What's going on with you, Jack? What's up? How was your ski trip? It's good. I'm, I'm stuck here for another day, so I mean, I'm gonna go hit Aspen Mountain for an hour or so. Dude, go to the go to the spa there. Really? I love that place. Dude, my you guys are not believe how shredded my quads are right now. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> I remember the CYDY panic like it was yesterday. It was just yeah. It was epic. <laughs> I remember Jack taking like <laughs> an ungodly amount of size at like 520, and I'm like, hey, that's pretty big size. And it like drops to 480, and he like tripled down or something. And I was like, oh my God, you animal. And yeah. it worked. I think I, I might have took like. Maybe I took like 10k shares and then it went lower and I was like, all right, 20k, all right, 25k, 30k. I don't even know, but I I bought a lot of that one. I think I was quick to sell too, unfortunately. I did have a nice, you know, really nice bounce from 465 to you know seven. It's pretty good for that kind of size too. I mean, it's just a liquidity thing, right? You just don't see that anymore. Like, you know, one will come eventually, but now like you really can't do that on anything unless it's like i don't know i really don't think you can do that right now one thing that i've learned through these last two years is those those sharp panics even on something like uh tggi that was just a random panic but the severity of the sharpness of the panic is usually um uh, indicative of how good the bounce is going to be when it's just a straight down waterfall, um, you know, when everything lines up and it's a straight down waterfall, those are the best bounces like SHMP and CYDY. Those, um, you know, both panic 50%, $1.50, $10 to five bucks. And those were, in my opinion, like the highest odds bounces that you can justify in your head at the time if you're able to recognize you know what's really going on it totally reminds me of cvsi as well just you know that waterfall action and then that level two turn that's actually clean it's not really a choppy way down and you just get you know a massive amount of shorts covering a massive amount of buyers and with those delayed executions of the otc market it just gets bought up it just gets chased up and it's it's, it's really a sick pattern when it's there He walks Yo, Jack, I'm curious about your KSCP trade. If you want to go over it. Up to uh, you. Yeah. I actually got squeezed out on the um, update in the 20... When I think I was short at 24 into the parabolic. Uh, it was like first multi-day runner and it was dapping up. It's and pull back. Honestly. Uh, but yeah, shorter than 24s. I was on a flight all day, so I was just covering and paying myself and then it started coming back and just squeeze out the rest of my shares. Although it's pretty crazy because like those uh, 
after hours parabolics they just don't seem to really break it, but for some reason it's a pretty strong resistance time and time again but then after that i just got back to business the next day because i was paying myself so the loss wasn't too bad so i was shorting it at 21. oh yeah yeah so i'm in colorado a little bit of a time change hour behind and it's oh, no. 7 30 when the market's supposed to open here but i was reading the wrong time so like, when the stock was spiking after their pr i was just sizing in and i was like man this morning spike looks a little sketchy because it's so illiquid so i started like panic covering a little bit and then i realized the was still closed. but it worked out well and i just kept covering on the mountain But it's business as usual for Jack. <laughs> I like those plays where like I can shorten the morning and then just keep an eye on it because unless there's like a real threat like like on the top day when it was spiking into the 24s and kept going higher, then I'll just take off because like I have a set risk and then if not, it'll just keep fading ideally and I can just cover around noon, one o'clock, two o'clock. So what's going, where what's going on with Mr. Berta? Yeah, so we're, I'm just going to say quick, we're an hour into the day. It's the same thing. We got like their snap, which is up 50%. And then there's like Indo, which is up 22%. And then everything below that, like volatility, volume is just so far down. Yeah, I got some snap from um, low 34s. Sold quite a bit up here in the 38. Um, just trying to keep a piece. I think it can see 40. If not, I just have locked enough in. I can stop break even or even do a slow day at this point, honestly, because you know, I've sold some shares. Um, I'm short Ford a little bit, stop on break even again. I missed that one though. That would have been, I really wanted to get Ford short right out of the gate, kind of like opening range breaks to the low. Missed it, trade and snap, but um, got some short 1805, just risking 1807, 1808, the top of this uh, little high here. Um, other than that, that's my two positions right now forward, short, and snap long. Dude, it's freezing in Austin right now. It's so cold today. You got to come to Florida, 80s all week. 80s yeah i'll come to florida i'll be down hey i owe you a drink too bro by the way i never told you but uh back when dwop was going nuts what was it uh october december yeah yeah like the first time and then uh we were all trying to catch the uh the panic dip buy on it and i remember you had put in chat something about like it was going to come down to like some 69 number or whatever i don't know if you remember this <laughs> um but 69 bro Total, total fluke or luck or whatever it was, but I put an order in at that level, forgot about it, <laughs> got filled. 30 minutes later, I'm up 20 grand. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, could have been the most horrendous. Yeah. Yeah. It just happened. You know, one of those times you got lucky. I got lucky. It's not luck. It's not I'm luck, like, bro. It's a key number these days. Look at Bitcoin. Yeah. Look at Bitcoin. It's Everyone crazy. just wanted to be out at 69,000 everyone at least sell some and then it ended up being the top i was still out in vegas too this was right after uh, uh traders for a cause but i'm still out there and i locked in like 20 grand i'm thinking it's about to be a weekend yeah that's so phenomenal about to be a weekend yeah so i owe you a drink though that, that okay one's on you yeah i'll see i'll see you soon we'll do it i gotta go start a fire downstairs for my family one sec fire <clears throat> That's a true Gilman. What's up with Texas all of a sudden getting so cold? Global warming. I think over in Dallas, like it was snowing. Mm. Yeah, Dallas got it worse than we did here in Austin. But yeah, like maybe like two inches of snow or something.
How much snow is out? Did you guys get hit with that storm in Michigan, Dom? Yeah, that was like uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday. We got like a foot. The schools have been closed for three days. Yeah. That was a rough storm. We got hit with it too over here. It's raining out a bunch. It's supposed to be raining out a bunch this weekend too. It's, um, where I am, it's supposed to be raining like for 24 hours straight. It's probably just going to melt everything if it doesn't get cold. Is it not freezing temperatures right now? No, oh, yesterday it was 39. And today, today it's colder, it looks like. Good going some. Today it's 26. So yeah, it's probably going to be fun. icy today. Yeah, ours like started off with like this heavy wet snow because it was like 35 degrees and it was like kind of rain, kind of snow, and then it turned to ice and then we got dumped on for like 24 hours straight. I shoveled, yeah. me and Randy shoveled the driveway once, but I didn't make it out for the second round once the next like six inches came. So my driveway's packed. <laughs> you haven't left the house or you just take the, the truck through it? I try not to leave the house more than once or twice a week. Damn. No. But yeah, my Rand truck can go through it. I had to take the garbage out today and I could not get it through. It was a workout. What's, uh, is Randy staying over? Randy's the screens behind me. Matthew's in the office now. You can save it up to Matthew. So Matthew? He can't hear you. But, oh, you're on the thing. I want to imagine he said hi. Is, uh, how's his trading going in the slow market? He's too emotional, man. You know him. He has like one week, his like first full time week of trading, and he's like, this sucks. Everything sucks. I'm never going to do this. I literally never said that. No, he never said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, you got to give it time. Most of us spent like what up, Jack? 10 months, two yeah. years doing this before we ever made it, and like, this is like, it's a great market, I think, to learn in, though. Because, like, you can be super specific. You can actually wait for the patterns to show up. And, like, there's not an overload of, like, tickers. Because sometimes I feel like if you start in a super hot market and you lose money, it's even more discouraging. Mm -hmm. But, like, right now, at least everyone kind of is dealing with something. Yeah, that's true. I think that uh, Matthew has a pretty good uh, eye for catching or for looking at the, the nice charts. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think he'll be fine. He's just got to master his emotions. That was pretty That was pretty annoying on XELA yesterday, or a few days ago. It looks like a sign I know. Again, I was though. super... I Whenever Jack messages me about a ticker I'm watching, I get super pumped. I'm like, yes, I'm right. It's going to work. And I love that 70 level. I just The way it broke it, I couldn't chase. Yeah, I didn't like it either. It was the third green day, too, on the daily, just, but I guess there was enough consolidation the day prior. It even broke under that, like, 66 support. I was like, all right, it's going to come down. It's going to hold. And then once we break over that 70 level, like, the thing's going to go to a buck. Yeah. And then it was like, it was just in the corner of my screen on like a smaller chart. And it was just like, every time I looked at it, it was like two cents higher, just all green candles. I was like, is this for real? Because there's not so many breakouts right now. So when you miss one, it's kind of sad. Yeah. It held the previous breakout level at 75 and now it's having a little green day today. Yeah, I keep watching it. I don't want to forget about it because that push through a dollar could be kind of interesting. Yeah. It probably goes to a buck fifty or something. That's where it's got some uh, half dollar and it's got some resistance there. Maybe one eighties. I don't know, but it's nice. I'm, I'm down for either of those. It's a nice mover. It moves for a few days. Yeah. Maybe well, on the final one, it actually gets a little. Uh... Momentum actually has a big gap up or something. Yeah. Because it gapped down on Wednesday and then went to continue its run. And that's kind of annoying. Hard to hold, though. 
Oh yeah, that was that was tricky. Still would have made probably ten cents on the breakout. That's not bad. Yeah. But, One of those situations yeah, I missed, where I look back. What? I missed trading breakouts. Me too, dude. I I I like don't even look at OTCs more. And it's sad. I like feel like I used to feel like it was a sin to look at listed stocks. Like I'd be like, what am I doing? I'm breaking rules. And now like I'm basically just like a listed trader because there isn't an OTC worth looking at. Like Yeah. I bought a little AIAD this morning. I have sixty thousand shares, that's what I got filled, so kinda of forgot I was in that, but C O W D. Oh there AI A I A D. What's C O W D? That used to be the ticker before. Oh really? Mm -hmm. CLWD yeah, bunch of scan, bunch of biddies. Was that the one we were bagging? Yep. The one that got saved. Yeah, there's your save day on uh, eight dash four. I was pumping that stock religiously for so long. <clears throat> I bought the dip at I bought the dip at like nine cents. I thought I was smart. <laughs> I thought I was gonna break that nineteen area, but the market just went to shit. Is getting really All right, so we're about an hour into market open. Uh, you know, <laughs> this is kind of what we signed up for. Kind of already knew that there weren't going to be a lot of trades and a lot of things to really, you know, talk about in terms of the market. Um, but it's been a pleasure, you know, catching up with you guys. Um, I'm not asking you guys to stay for any amount of time. Whenever you guys want to bail, if you guys have other things to do, if you guys need to light fires for your family, whatever it is, um, don't feel <laughs> obligated to sit through, you know. It, you know, definitely for me, like, the longer I sit here, the more I am instigated to take a trade on something I really yeah. don't want to trade. So for me, it's like, you know, can I show up? Can I see what's moving? Can I have a pulse on the market? And then can I get the F out of here before, you know, I'm tempted to go after snap and short it. Um, that's just kind of like where I'm at. And I don't want to make anyone stay here if you guys don't want to stay here. So that's, I'm just, you know, putting that out there. Um, uh, it's kind of the morning madness is done and there was no madness Ooh. this morning and there's not going to be any madness. So. Except for spy. <laughs> Goodbye. For the spy, he says. Goodbye. I can't even make a Wait, scan bye. anymore with TJ. I used to sit down and be like pumped or make a scan with TJ. And I was like, dude, I think the algorithm on Ford is turning with the overall spy and everything's going to flip flop tomorrow. There's going to be a good risk reward opportunity. And like, hey, bring, is, up Ford, time, bring up Ford again, and I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> hey. If you're making money, you're making money. Uh, yeah. Uh, same same with me, Dom. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm probably you been, driving you guys. What have you been trading, Dom? Nothing. I've been basically just uh, trying to just focus on daily chart setups, like actual patterns, because last year kind of got me into a world where I traded a lot more reactively, where I was kind of allowed to trade the runners and stuff, and that's not working for me. So I need to actually trade patterns. So I'm just buying breakouts, buying first green days, and shorting first red days. And easy. Yeah, it's a lot. It's just there's just no room for error right now for like stupid plays. They just murder the bottom line. <clears throat> so let's take a let's take a little poll here. How many people had a green January? <laughs> <laughs> I technically had a great January. Okay. They were, swing, they were swing from December, then I closed. <laughs> okay. Jack, you um, too. I, I'm honestly not sure what what portraying, but I, if I have to guess, it's probably red. Bryce. Matt. Yeah, I had a, a small green January. Yeah, mine was pretty small uh, for me. Like it was like eight, eight or nine k green. 
I'll you know, January taught me some good lessons though. For for me, it's just like I'm I learned, you know, when BBIG was on day two of its freaking spike, I was like, oh, two more days, get to six or seven, I'm all over this. And and what I learned is like I need that liquidity. I need I need a liquid freaking runner. If I'm gonna trade try to first green day or first red day, which in my mind are very similar patterns, just reversed. Um, it needs to have liquidity, it needs to have volume, that kind of stuff. And like, even the, the stocks that are breaking out, like most of the things like Dave and, and some other things I've seen, EXTN, like they're just, there's no volume, you know? And, and, it, and it makes it so the spread is so wonky. And if you're trading a first green day and, and there's not a lot of volume, you're dealing with 40, 50 cent spreads like at times. And it's just so easy to stop out, so easy to fail. When you have that liquidity, it just seems like, it just seems like a better pattern. Um, and, in, 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 and in the case of more liquidity, like you're trading less, right? There aren't a lot of overly zealous liquidity. That's not even the right word. Uh, there's not a lot of the stocks that are running well on a bunch of volume, a bunch of dollar volume, you know, penny by penny spreads type idea. So that's kind of where I'm focused. You know, I've seen a number of great first green days and great first red days within the two months, but like the number I can count on one hand. Uh, and BBIG was a scenario where, you know, recognized it day two, you know, four more, you know, two more days, got under that sweet spot of three to four run, was able to recognize which risk mattered most to me and said, okay, this is where I deserve size. This is where like, okay, if I'm going to make my month, if I'm going to give me myself some cushion for all the, exactly what Roland tries to avoid, like the bleed outs, the 500, 500 to $1,000 losses when you're just like trying things with smaller size, like I got to maximize the opportunity when the setup is there. And it's not every first red day, you know, INTE had a first red day that wasn't really ideal in terms of liquidity and kind of trend but bbig like is picture perfect it has you know gratani if he was trading i talked to him about it it has six figure gratani written all, written all over it it's just you know one of those situations where you have a very dilutive stock you know pumped up by island boys i think and a number of other things that went into it so just like an incredible run and the only really real multi-day runner we've seen all year so i knew you know that's where risk belongs. That's where, you know, I'm not going to say size, but risk, you know, dollars on the table to try to maximize the reward to the downside. And everything I've tried in between BBIG has been small, you know, losses that chip away at that profit that I made at the beginning of the month last January. Uh, but it really taught me like what I want to see, you know, what was comfortable, what was familiar um, and where I was like, you know, comfortable with actually size, you know, to like, you know, kind of bring us back to what we're used to. And that was that was a wake up call, you know, that really was, you know, that that familiarity made me feel so comfortable that I know what to look for now. And and blatantly, it's not there like day after day after day. It is not there. So it's big time hands off and just like waiting for something to get good. Like Zila had had the components and it was getting there. But, you know, it really can't spike all that big. It really can't extend without consolidating and then breaking out. So I can't trade that. But I love you know, the liquidity profile of Zila, you know, trading 200 million shares in a day. That is what I'm looking for. But again, I needed to go to a buck 80. Like you were saying, I needed to actually make a move that is ridiculous. It's not really a, a chart I would ever buy given the overhead, but you know, if it does get extended, you know, and if it does end up working really well, it's one of those black swan outliers. I'll be all over it if it extends, you know, cause I like the volume profile, I like the liquidity first red day and first green day. So, you know, noticing which stocks are building up, noticing which stocks are constructing for something that you like is really important. And the other important thing is like hands off until it actually gets to where you want it to be and not trying it every day on like other subpar patterns. Hey, did we have a workout today? Bryce and Matt? I don't know. I think so, but the roads are gonna be pretty tough out there. Yeah, no, I'm a little worried about driving on the highway. Should I text him? Yeah, it might be worth it. See, INDO, I, I do consider a nice first green day today, but, you know, given the volume, given the wicks to the upside, it just like, you know, it's not a beautiful trend for me. Like, I feel like that's a situation that like, you could try, like, yeah, it worked today, but you're putting yourself in a situation where you're going to try literally every day 
because you don't really know which day it's going to be. And then like, you're going to get, you're going to get chopped up. You're going to take a few losses before you actually nail it. And I think that's because, you know, liquidity is an issue. Um, trend is an issue. You know, it, it goes green, it goes red, it goes green, it goes red. Um, so how do you know that this day is going to be the day? I mean, yeah, I kind of had like a makeshift double bottom yesterday ish. Um, but it's really hard to tell with these illiquid stocks because they're so easily manipulated up and down by just one whale of a person. You know what I mean? So I'm looking for the situation where retail overwhelms, you know, the one trader that can pretty much manipulate the stock with an unlimited bankroll. Yesterday was the day on something like Endo, which kind of would keep me out of it today. I was watching it yesterday, kind of thought about it. But even this pattern, like that's here's another thing that's changed kind of recently is like even through 2021, you know, we were what we were seeing for month, the last couple months was like first green day gappers just being range bound. And then day two possibly being range bound, and then super low volume day threes like that would run. And even that's kind of slowed down. Even now it's kind of like day three, day four, they struggle. They kind of fade and then we'll have kind of a random day at times. But even that pattern has been a little wonky lately. It hasn't been like day two or day three where these stocks have been going. And like, even like SBEV, I think, was it SBEV? SBEV, which was pretty nice. That one took like, you know, quite a while to develop, but that even that pattern now has been weaker from what I can tell. Tyler. Yeah. Spies breaking new lows. What do you think here? I'm short. I'm short, uh, <laughs> I'm short board. <laughs> Stop on break even. Stop on break even. <clears throat> board has a nice uh, little bearish wedge. Yeah, nice I was. The, the real problem was is I should be still swinging my original position. I had 10K short from like 2090 into that double top. 2104, pretty much clear cut double top market was done bouncing for three to four days. I mean, it was just, I covered it up. And then yesterday I was short 10 K again from, I don't know, I sent down the charts, like 2060 covered it up near lows, but I wasn't going to guess earnings, but I mean, everything's just going down. It's, it's basically like last year you could buy anything and it, and it would go up you can short anything and it's kind of going down obviously with a little bit of, you gotta have some rules of course, but, so this pattern would be the third red day? No, I mean, this This obviously I missed the, the original buy, but um, no, they had, they had clearly terrible earnings based upon the price action. Um, gap down, you know, you take a, you can take a short and then risk small, small amount. Wish it was summer. <laughs> so you could golf? Yeah. Oh yeah, you can't even golf, huh? That's why we ice fish. <laughs> <laughs> It's terrible. Twelve hours. <laughs> I don't. I can't think of something that sounds more miserable than ice fishing. <laughs> right. That sounds fun, man. I think it'd be fun. It was pretty fun for like a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> I was having a great time. <laughs> Usually now we just go for a couple hours. 
I don't know. That you can't trust game. God, dude. Yeah. Indio finally got the volume to stick around for this whole move. Yeah, the, if you're looking at like a 10 day, I was looking at a two, 10 day, 15 minute chart, like that volume is finally back and consistent. So that's that's kind of like your, that's, that's impressive volume. It's also in the energy, it's an energy company, which, you know, in my opinion, the energy sector is kind of warm right now. Not that we've really seen it in small cap, but just in the big cap stocks, like you can see, yeah, and for, for, you know, what I've always learned from Roland is that you could take macro themes and then, you know, boil it down into something that's like micro and relates to, to our, you know, small niche. So like, you know, I do like the energy sector for as long as like Exxon is up like 25% on the year and some other stocks that are, you know, others that are correlated to the sector are also doing well given the overall market. Uh, I just like yeah, the scenario. I'm seeing, uh, I see like HUSA, REI. BRN, GBR, some of those ones on the scan already. So it's, there's something there, maybe. And that's what I said when Indo ran the first time, like maybe there's something in the energy, get a couple plays, but they didn't really pan out. All right, twist my arm, I'll open up my scanner. No, it didn't. This is usually the death of me, midday. Yeah, I'm not going to be trading them, but they're just on it. And that's something I want to see too. I mean, and that's what I'm, that's one of my thoughts too, with all the prices coming down and getting a bunch of penny stocks again, it's like sector momentum. All we need is like a sector play to pop off or some kind of macro to get, you know, a sector going. And when they're all super cheap like this, it can be really fun, like really good times. Some of my favorite times. Are, is like penny stock momentum where you can just kind of like spread out, you know, spread your seed around a little bit. It's always fun. Yeah, that's one thing that I've noticed is everything is so cheap now that a lot of things are meant for a lot of things. As long as the spy doesn't truly have a, a big panic to, you know, sub 400 or whatever, if the spy can hold up, like a lot of these mm -hmm. penny stocks and sectors are so cheap. Yeah. Whether it's um, weed, weed's been beaten down without a bounce for a year. Yeah. Bitcoin, Bitcoin's been, um, you know, all the Bitcoin stocks and all the hot OTC Fang stocks and all, all these names are, are so beaten down that. It, the bottom could be in once the first hot market comes in and they could kind of trend up for for a little bit so something definitely to think of because it's been so bearish lately that the longer it stays bearish the more bullish it probably will be once they turn All right, gents, I think I got to get going. We, the kids are all at home because of this freeze. All the schools are closed. Do you guys have snow on the ground? Uh, yeah, it's like sleet. It's like fr like frozen rain, pretty much. But no one knows how to drive out there? Dude, it gets below 32 degrees in Austin, and the whole city shuts down. It's yeah, like the craziest literally. thing you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. Am I kidding? It's not. I'm not no, kidding. No, dude. I, for how like, you know, tough Texans are supposed to be, dude, when they see snow, they literally just start crying. Like, I read a news, I'm not, and I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone that was here from the freeze or something last year, but they're like, I have PTSD from, I'm like, shut up. You literally, you saw ice, dude. Dom's out here ice fishing. 
and you're crying because it's under 32 like grow, grow a pair but yeah everyone freaks out out here well um roland if you if you do start freaking out you know you always gotta you gotta place in my bedroom in, in scottsdale if you want to come out and visit <laughs> yeah um i'll be there I'll be there spring kids spring break for sure for like a whole week in March. Um, Wait. and then I'm going to try to get back there. Later, so I'll holler at you. Let's get some golfing, man. I want, I want to show you this, this new swing I got. It's fucking sick. New swing. All right. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Actually, Sounds good to me. Talk to me. Talk to me about the new swing, honey. Is it the left deltoid over the right pectoral? It's just, it's just leaning into it. Get that wall against your shoulder. Swing back. Close your eyes. Make some memories, baby. Get in where you fit in. Nice, I love it. Letting the club do the work, baby. All right, boys. Good talking to you. All right, All right Roland. We'll catch you soon. Peace, right. Roland. Catch you later, Bye, man. My dad. I'm gonna hop off as well before I do something stupid. Start trading. So. <clears throat> Thanks, y'all. Have a good one. We'll talk soon. Thanks for joining us, Matt. See you, Monica. See you, Monica. I'll probably hop off too. I got to get some breakfast and hit the mountain. Oh, uh, fall on one by one. Are you? Wait, 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 Jack. I had a question, a real question for you. Huh. Do you do you ski or snowboard? I snowboard. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. All right. All right. So many people ski. I'm like. I know they're all pansies. I don't get it. Okay. Well, well, well. Now you're offending some people in the chat room, so <laughs> let's cool it. But he's a skier, isn't he? <laughs> well, ski <skiing's laughs> easier, right? Huh? Skiing's easier the two, right? Yeah. Dude, snowboarding is so much easier. You fall in leaf down the mountain. You just like go and you're down the mountain. Like it's easy. Like skis, no, I you're think, too I think I've been doing easier. a lot of research on this topic today, actually, because I was so curious why so many people ski. Apparently, skiing is easier just to pick up, but it's yeah. harder to master. Snowboarding is hard to learn, but easier to master. You have to be way more coordinated to snowboard. I mean, I know some pretty uncoordinated, unathletic individuals that will ski drunk just fine. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know. I can snowboard just fine. I'm probably the most uncoordinated individual you'll ever meet. So I want to I want to be proof that anyone can do it if I can do it. <laughs> well, right. I'm not saying that anyone can or cannot do it. I'm just saying uh, it seems like a majority of people all ski, not a majority of people snowboard. Bryce, I think okay. you're just like too top heavy. That's I'm a fan of, uh, of skiing because that's what my dad told me to do. And also... Whenever I watch the X Games and I see the freestyle freestylers ski versus the freestyler snowboard, I'm like those skiers, you know, they're much more handsome and they got way bigger, way bigger muscles than those snowboarders. So <laughs> <laughs> they're more I'm handsome. My legs. Are... He's just checking out the, the the athletes while he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look at that hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, I gotta get some breakfast. All right, Jack. You guys are. Thanks for having me on. Peace. Have fun. Well, if everyone else is hopping off, I'm getting really tempted to take trades. Uh, I just my goal today was not to not to take a trade. So I probably I just kind of want to close. I guess I could close my screens and just keep Zoom open. But I think I'm going to hop off and grab some breakfast as well. I've got my workout in an hour to go uh, slide off the roads until. What do you work on today? Um, I think today, so I don't know, because it should be it should be like um, we normally just do like two upper body circuits a week and then a lower body circuit. So today should be upper body, probably more focused on like back, um, back and chest. Trying to find a funny joke, can't find one. Damn. <laughs> well, no, dude. Roll, I don't know. I don't know how big Roland was like back in Arizona when he lived there, dude. He's huge. Roland is Roland, Roland builds muscle. It's not fair. It's not fair. He's one of those really athletically gifted people. Like he he, he goes to the gym once and he comes out ten pounds heavier and he's yoked. D that, you know? He started working out here again and it was just so clear within like three months how much size he'd put on. I was like, he's like it's muscle memory. I'm like honestly, I'm sure. Oh, let's see. Do we have a workout today? All right, we're still on.
yeah, I'm probably going to get some food in me before, before that workout then, but thank you guys for having me on. It was good catching up with you guys and Tyler. It was nice meeting you. Yeah, you too, man. I hope you're, uh, I hope your Ford short pays you dividends and, uh, been paying uh, well last couple I, days. I might I might start shorting it just to piss Dom off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, a bit of money if he, if he... <laughs> All right guys, short thanks guys again short. for having me on. It was good catching up with you guys. I hope y'all are doing well. And uh keep keep let's keep in contact. It's been a while since we've all talked. For sure. Yeah, I definitely I definitely plan on doing more of these in the future and just you know calling you from time to time, late night, whenever it is. Just saying what's Listen, up. Yeah, I, I love those booty calls from you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, guys. Have a good rest of your Friday. Have a good weekend. You too, Bryce. We'll see you on Friday. Later. Wait, today's Friday, right? Yeah, okay. All right. I think so. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Then there were four. Then there were four. When are you moving down to Florida, Jack? Okay, it was an estimate. Uh, one year. Regardless of that 8.89. One year, From, sir. Uh, so, like, 2023? Yeah, at the beginning of 2023. Like, January. Like, moving to Florida? Huh? We're moving to Florida? I think so, yeah. I'm not sure where yet, but... Uh, I'm, I'm going down again in mm-hmm. April. Or May to check out more places and stuff. Looking for that that country lifestyle, more like the farmland, kind of quiet. You know, fifty acres, just relax. Perfect. Good Miami's morning. calling your name. Huh? <laughs> Miami's calling your name. Dude, no, I won't. I don't want to be close to Miami. I'm kidding. Yeah, Miami's. Uh... There's in Tampa. I think that's uh, probably the best city out there. Why don't we just like all yeah, move to Wyoming and live, live on the farm? What's what's is Wyoming a tax-free state? That is right. Probably one of the Dakotas or Montana, maybe. I mean, that's some farmland, and that's that's like some some tax benefits, and and I would live on a farm. I had a good Wi-Fi. Like wolves. I don't like wolves. Wolves exist. I thought that was like a make-believe thing, like unicorns. No, they're real. They're in Michigan. <laughs> really? Yeah. Do they come on the ice while you're fishing? I don't know about that. That would be very scary. They're in the UP. Hmm. I know what that is. I would hope so. <laughs> Dude, I just there's like nothing out there to trade. I like my I like Montana. Big sky country. Kind of range. Range. Yeah, Montana is pretty nice. But no ones. Really? What's in Montana? Yeah. Big sky country, baby. I want to visit Montana. Let's go to a dude Mountain. ranch. What's a dude ranch? It's where you go and you ride horses and pretend you're a cowboy for a few days. Oh, Yellowstone? Something like that. You just do it for a vacation, though. That would be fun. Montana has a state website. I like that about them. Spy new low of the day. Someone says. Jeez. So, guys, I'm, I'm about ready to wrap it up, too. Um, if you guys want to keep talking afterwards, but I'm going to, I think we're going to end the stream pretty soon. Um, if you guys, you know, the guys that are still watching, if you guys like this, like, I totally plan on just doing it more often. It's just casual. It's just our way of catching up and, and shooting the shit. You know, me and Roland used to work out of the same office. You know, Dom and Jack used to work out of the same office. We talk to these guys every day. We have this great rapport, great banter. I consider them, you know, more than trading accountability buddies, but friends that I've known for three, four years. Um, and like oftentimes, like, you know, Roland and I used to be shooting the shit in, in the office and just like talking about the state of the market, talking about the state of ourselves, our psychology, and just saying like, you know, I wish I could get away for people to to hear what we're talking about because it was good stuff. You know, it's just like we've been in the market for five, six years. 
Um, some of us a little less, but you know, definitely stood the test of time at this point so far in this bull market. And we just wanted to, you know, if we are going to talk and have insightful things to say and, and funny things to say and entertaining things to say, um, we definitely just wanted to just, you know, broadcast it when we could, if we're comfortable, whatever it is. It's not really about, you know, making trades and alerting people to stocks. Like, I don't think that really benefits anyone. But hearing us talk, hearing us, like, discuss the things that we did discuss today, I think, you know, goes a long way for perspective. And that's, that's all we're trying to share with you guys, perspective, a little bit of humor, and, and show, you know, the community we built, you know, over the years of being within the Tim Sykes Challenge and, you know, graduating past that and moving on into our own endeavors and still just retaining a relationship, retaining friendships, you know, traveling the world together. Um, it's been a beautiful thing, like, to not only make stock trading a career, but also, you know, some of my best friends in life are, you know, Dom, Jack, you know, Roland, TJ coming up there. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful thing to say, hey, this is my career, but I'm also involved with the inner workings of the niche and i wouldn't be the trader i am today without you know networking to jack you know networking with dom and, and growing together you know i remember you know dom jack and myself i remember when we all had less than 100k verified on profitly like i remember it like it was yesterday right and to have all grown together and got to where we are it's just a beautiful thing and I, I consider you guys lifelong friends and um i think everyone in this endeavor should really reach out and 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 be involved i'm not saying like you know find someone and, and mimic their trades or anything, just like be involved, put yourself out there, really dive in, traders for a cause, whatever summits that do come up, it's, it's great to just have perspective, talk to other traders that, you know, battle the same things because our spouses, our friends, our, our family, they don't understand when I like, you know, if I go to my, my, my mom and I'm like, yeah, I lost $20,000 today. Like it just blows her mind. You know, she's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, it's a normal, it's a normal day, whatever. And that, that's obviously not a conversation every day, but like these are the people I can talk to about those kind of, you know, feelings and thoughts and like you know down draws up draws whatever it is hot market slow markets i come to these guys um they're they're my they're my support system so um just want to share that with you guys thank you so much for for coming on jack and and tj and, and dom for hosting it's honestly an honor and a pleasure to uh to have known you guys and and, and grown this way yeah great way to close it out love uh love the words and yeah i enjoy uh I enjoy coming on to these and catching up with all the boys uh, every so often, whatever month, every couple months. And it's good just to, to reconnect and, and make sure that uh, we're all still alive and all of our hearts are still beating. <laughs> so, <laughs> For sure. Let's try, let's try to, to get together here in, in person sometime in the next six months. Yeah, let's try maybe try to structure the next one of these when there's something hot going on in the market, even if it's a little more last minute. Maybe there'll be some runners or something because today is just boring. But it is nice to just talk to you guys and go over trading and just realize this doesn't have to be a lonely game. Get out there, network with people in whatever community you're in. Uh, get to know these people. Trading is lonely, but it doesn't have to be. It can be a lot of fun. You can just, you know, talk to each other and shoot the S word when you're not trading. Just have some fun. Meet up and do your own meetups. You know, I just saw TJ in Florida with Randy. Um, I'm sure we'll schedule something here sometime this year for all of us who are still here to get together, do some live trading, just hang out, have a good steak dinner. Um, but yeah, it was a good couple hours. I think I'm ready to start my weekend. I just took my golf course play on AIAD. <laughs> you can't golf today, can you? No, I'm going to go meet up with Bosque and go ice fishing. There you go. Um, That'll be fine. But yeah. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything mm -hmm. else? No, no sir. I think we're good. All right. Thanks, you guys, well. for coming. Let's do it.